Hey there, so in this video I'm going to work through example 16 of the 1.3, 1.4 notes. Just another example to show you the steps for entering these modeling um, problems in your calculator. So, um, if you'll recall, I'm going to pull up the notes real quick. This was the data, and it told us here that these were the number of individual tax returns filed in the U.S. Um, from 2000 to 2009, and they're telling us that we're going to let X equal the number of years since 2000. And as I mentioned at the end of the content video, that we cannot put these years in since X is the number of years since 2009. I have to subtract 2000 from each of these years, so that in, the, in L1 I'm going to be plugging in the numbers 0 through 9. And in L2, which will be my Y, I'll be plugging in these values. So, go back to my calculator. Um, I'm going to go to Y equals, and I'm going to clear anything out that's already there. I'm going to go up to the top and turn my plots on. Now that's done. And at that point, also, I have already turned my diagnostics on. I'm going to go through that step one more time, just so that you're clear on how to do that. I hit second catalog. Remember, once you've done this, unless you reset your calculator, you do not have to do this again. I'm going to hit my X to the negative 1 key. That just gets me closer to the D's. Then I'm going to use my down arrow key. And I'm going to hit Enter on Diagnostics On. Hit Enter one more time so that it says that it did it. All right, now I'm ready to enter my data. So I go to Stat. Hit Enter on Edit. You would have your last um, entries in there already. So to clear that, there's an easy way to do that. You hit the up arrow, and you're up here at L2, and you hit then hit, so you make sure like L2 here is highlighted. You hit the clear and the down arrow key. Don't hit delete. If you hit delete, you're going to actually delete your L2 column. Then I'm going to right arrow over here to L1, arrow all the way up to the top, hit clear and your down arrow key. And that clears it out completely without having to, um, you know, manually go in and delete each value, okay? So now in L1, I'm putting in 0 through 9. And then I'm going to L2. I'm typing in the number of tax returns. We'll just know that these are in millions. We won't need to put all those zeros behind it. that in. I'm just going to hit clear now just to get rid of all that stuff down there. All right, so now I'm just going to hit second mode just to clear out of there. I'll, I'll clear this off as well. Then I'm ready to actually um, in part part A of your of your notes say um, does the data um, enter the data in your calculator and graph it. So now if I hit graph I'm in a standard window so remember zoom 9 puts you in the stat window. So there's, there's the data itself, the graph. Does that appear to have a linear correlation? And it's, it's not a perfect straight line, but as I mentioned to you before, real data is, is, is rarely perfect, okay? But we could, we could um, fit a fairly decent straight line through that data, and we'll do that in just a moment. Part B says now use your calculator to fit that linear model. So I'm just going to hit second mode to clear out of there. And I'm going to go to stat, arrow over to calculate, Number four is your linear regression, so I'm just going to hit number four. Um, my lists are in L1 and L2. If you ever have deleted yours and maybe you had to now enter yours in L3 and L4, just change it to L3 and L4. Um, you, you, get, you can change them by you hit your second, and you'll notice above one is L1, above two is L2, above three is L3, above four is L4, and so on. So if you ever need to change them, you can. Mine are still in L1 and L2, so I'm going to leave them alone. I want to store my regression equation in Y1, so I'm going to hit VARS. VARS, remember, is right beside clear. Arrow over to Y VARS using your right arrow key. Hit enter on function. Hit enter on Y1. And so now you've put your, you're going to be putting your equation in Y1. Arrow down one more time and hit calculate. This gives you now your equation, so we would say I'm having you round to three decimal places. So we would say y equals 1.455x plus 125.055, okay? So that would be my equation, and you'll notice in the solution key that's what I have done. I've given you the printout there, and then this is what um, we would say is our final answer there for the equation, um, your linear model. 
Part C wants your correlation coefficient. So if I go back to my calculator, my correlation coefficient is my R value. And here I have a, a value, R value of 0.973. So that's a fairly um, strong model, okay? So I would call that a, a you know, really strong fit. So um, I would list that for part C. Part D says use your model to predict the number of tax returns in, oh, excuse me the number of tax returns in 2011. So you can't plug 2011 into your equation because remember your X values represent the number of years since 2000. So you would figure out, okay, well, 2011 minus 2000 would be 11 years. So you're gonna let X equal 11 and solve for X, I'm sorry, excuse me, solve for Y. And then in letter E, it says in what year will the number of tax returns be at 200 million? The tax returns were measured on the y-axis, so I'll be plugging 200 in for y and solving for x. So I subtract the 125.055, that lands me here, then divide by the 1.455, that gives me the 51.5. So, and I tell you to round to the nearest whole number, so 51.5 rounds up to 52. You're, you're wanting to know what year, so it's not year 52, and remember that your years were the number of years since 2000, so I added 2000 here. If it were the number of years since 1980, I'd add 1980 here. So 52 plus 2000 would be the year 2052. So it's gonna reach 200 million in the year 2052, okay? I hope this helps with um, entering it into your calculator. Hopefully this also gives you the luxury of being able to pause it and rewind and that sort of thing. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks a lot.